Okay. Okay, Backblaze, Backblaze International Strategy. So so all of this stuff is really, really basic. Um, and so we can actually go through it quickly. It's all it's all really straightforward. <clears throat> hey, your brother, there you go. All yeah. right, cool. Okay, trivia question number one. Which founder was born in Ethiopia? Anybody? Tim. Tim Newfire. Tim. Tim Newfire was born in Ethiopia. Uh, so he has birthrights there. He His parents were on a... Um, uh, what what do you call that? Yeah, Peace, Corps. Corps. Peace, Peace Corps. Corps thing when he was born. So Tim Newfire. Uh, question number two: Which founder was born in a country that no longer exists? Gleb. This Billy. Uh, I was going to say yeah. Gleb or Chad West. I'm not a founder, but yes. Uh, Billy oh, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there are multiple right answers. I actually was thinking about Billy because Hong Kong's gone. Mm -hmm. Uh, Billy was born in a country called Hong Kong. Uh, it's but you'll, you'd have to read the history books to find out what it is because it, it it really has disappeared. I'm hoping it's <laughs> called Hong Kong. The UK is still there, right? Jimmy's a nomad. <laughs> but it is, but it, Hong Kong was never a country. But the other good, yeah. oh, good vlogs here. The other the other answer, which someone just said, which I didn't realize is a good answer, is also uh, the Soviet Soviet Union. Soviet Union. Um, uh, but if you go to the airline. <laughs> It select the country, pull down, it lists Hong Kong as a country. Well, that makes it valid. Um, oh, yeah. one, of the, one of the things, <laughs> as it came up earlier, this is mostly a talk about localization, and we have a very simplified view of that. All of this is all fun and trivia, but we, we have basically the idea that there are 11 languages that our product speaks. Um, but anyway, because uh, uh, firing forks, because these are dumb. Uh, how many countries do full-time Backblaze work in? Two. Yes, and Ukraine. Two. Five. Three. Oh, I'm three. going with three. No, it's three. It's three. It's three. Three. <clears throat> oh, are are you countries? contractors or only no, no, no. Just <clears throat> not contractors. So Indonesia's not counted. <laughs> oh, Indra oh, that's good. And there's that's also good. Poland. Which one of the countries? Poland Somebody list the countries. Contractor. The United Ukraine, States, Ukraine, and Ukraine. US, Canada. Yep. Canada. Who is in What's Canada? The... Who's in Canada? Elton. Elton. Elton oh. lives and works out of Canada. Is he currently uh, there? Is he just there because of coronavirus? Uh, yeah, no, he's only he there for to... COVID, right? No, it... I don't think so. I think that he had to go back. I thought that there was a visa thing. Well, oh. now there might be. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Luckily, he got into the country soon enough yeah, you know, he, that it, so before he, the borders he moved, closed. He moved back to be closer with his wife, and COVID sped up the process. Okay, okay. so it was intentional. And then the hardest question of all, how many total languages do all the Backblaze employees speak? Uh, uh, Many. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> we have we have no idea. English uh, and bad English. We have we really have no idea. Uh, I'm thinking um, around seventeen. <laughs> Did you count oh, no. that up really quickly? Or no, no. I I was trying to figure this out because if you're counting Ukraine and Russian is two different languages, that's Ukraine Russian. Somebody I'm pretty sure knows Portuguese. I I would love to uh, have them raise uh, their hand. Lisa probably does. Yeah, Spanish. Is Who's you're in Lisa? California, Lisa. Lisa, who works with me, Billy. <laughs> so Lisa? then there's a. Uh, Does she French? speak Portuguese? You should check that out because we need. We actually need a native. We need the translation. Yeah. <clears throat> well, so uh, French, German, uh, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Swedish. Uh, we have people from India that speak natively. Uh, Tagalog. Uh, Tagalog. And I Golly. think okay. So anyway, the point the point of all of this is the text in red, which is Backblaze was formed by people from different countries. We have always been a multinational. Uh, we speak lots of languages. We have data centers in in uh, two countries now, um, and we I swear and, too. yeah, uh, and we we already already make money selling to more than 200 country, countries. So so that's that's the basis of this. Okay, so moving on. Let's, oh, yes, I do. Okay, so we're going to do the client first. Okay, so any of you with a Mac client can change the interface, and it's totally harmless to do, by holding down the control key or the option key and clicking the settings. Woo! Okay, so in... In the Windows product, you can pull down this menu and you see the 11 languages that we speak. Does that all make sense? And if we choose one of them, which one is uh, Chinese uh, uh, traditional? The, the, uh, the, the one the with the star. One, the no, the blue, the blue and red one. Yeah. yeah. This one? 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's all it takes. And if you and if you hold down the control key on your Windows client and click the settings, it'll alternate the languages, and then you just have to keep clicking it to get back to English. So the translation is perfect. Who say is not perfect? Okay. So keep this is China. this translation <laughs> is very very impressive if you do not speak China Ch Chinese. Ch uh, uh, so China. <laughs> to China. speak China. So um, I keep I keep. I keep trying to manipulate the actual screen. Uh, okay, so French, you know, French. And you can see, um, do you notice, do you see where it says files and megabytes? Uh, this uh, 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 right here, I don't know if you can yeah. see your mouse. Yeah, your mouse. Yes. Okay, so do you see how, do you see how this, see how the megabyte goes over this line? Yeah. That's a bug. And if you want to make two hundred dollars, you would file that in Jira. But we'll get to that as the last slide, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's a bug, and you should file these bugs because. What do you want? You want it web? What? You want to wrap to the next line? Well, we got to do something with it. It just looks ugly. Uh, in some, of, it was I think what we're supposed to do is hide the line in some of these. But I, I think someone else has been working on this, uh, so it, it may not work correctly anymore. Do you, you just blame Vlad? Do this quickly. So to keep going, see all the languages. If you speak one of these languages, you can earn double points toward the two hundred dollar prize by filing translation errors. Because uh, that that's more valuable to us, but but the layout is definitely a, an error. It's a bug, and and we just don't we just don't QA this enough. And and when I get asked, you know, like, well, why is this wrong? I'm like, well, because you didn't file a damn bug and get it fixed. So <clears throat> we need bugs. We need bugs in the system. Okay. So that is the client. Okay. Let's see if I can go to the website. Uh, da, 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 da. So now I'm going to stop presenting. So okay, so the client speaks 11 languages, right? And that you know is native, and it's already out there, and it's used all over the world by by by, by people today. Okay, I'm going to stop presenting, and then I'm going to present now. So everyone see this? Okay, so this is our homepage. This is this is absolutely standard, totally off the shelf. Our homepage. If you go to the My Account tab and then scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a language menu there. And you can't see it because it's off the bottom. Okay, so there's the language menu. <clears throat> it's exactly the same set of 11 languages. And our website here, let's pick one that we, uh, that we can understand, Chinese uh, traditional. Our, our, our whole entire website is localized flawlessly into all 11 languages. Now the complicated, thing one of the complicated things about doing this is there are certain things which are names like backblaze that is a it's not it's not supposed to be translated so that's not a bug when you see backblaze um uh and things like b2 cloud storage are uh product lines and and those names exist in english and they're not supposed to be localized so going across the top here all of the tabs must exist and uh, Google's asking me to translate this shit. Hold on. Uh, uh, each tab must exist. And things like, I assume Backblaze for Business is actually correct. But see how beautiful, isn't this just, it isn't is. this gorgeous? It is correct. We don't translate But, but here, here is an example of another bug that someone could make $200 if they filed it. You see, the page says B2 Cloud Storage, right? However, this phrase up here, do you guys see my mouse waving over this thing? The B2 cloud storage, that's the same phrase. Yeah. So one of those two is wrong. I don't care which one, so file a damn butt. I mean, this is this is shit. I, like, it, it should be possible to like figure this out in seconds and, and whatever. And I believe those are all filed against. Correct, so no. I don't know what you're saying. No. Billy, you have to you have to file it in Jira. It doesn't count if you put it here. The the funny thing, yeah, Brian, yeah, yeah, yeah. You I, must file it in Jira, or it doesn't count toward the contest. I, I no, thought no, no, you no. were I thought you I were going to say I, that I, I, email I, 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 and password weren't translated when they should be. So product names should not be email password. You might as well translate them. Oh, as long as we're here, let me let me point out one other thing. So the region selector is right here. So hey, what, what, I'm pulling down the region selector. I can see it on my screen, but I can't see it in the presentation. But whatever. If you go here, that's how you change the, the, 
the region selector. Here's another example. This this Google name here, that's another example of um, uh, Google is a proper you know term. And and if you need a comparison to see how this is done, either go to the Apple website. The Apple website's localized into like Klingon and like 200 other languages. So uh, and and probably the Google site has a language pull down somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, okay, so that was the region selector, but the regions is different. That's just where you want your data. You for, for B1, for backup, you want your data as far away from you as possible. I think that's self-evident, right? You don't want a meteor to kill you and your data and the data center. So I do all my backups to Europe, uh, as any sane person would. And the Europeans should back them up into the US, um, unless they have a, a law that, that prevents them from doing that. Uh, B B2 is more complicated. If you're using it for backup, same rules apply. If you are using it for um, serving up a website, latency might matter. And you might not care about the, you have a backup of your own website in other places. So, so that's up to you. Anyway, so uh, back to this thing. To get back into English, obviously you, you go back to my account here and scroll all the way down to the bottom and you pick English, okay? But uh, every one of the top tabs must exist in all 11 languages. So you've seen that the client is completely localized, uh, uh, internationalized and localized. We'll get to that definition in a second. And the website is all completely localized and it's been that way for the last like 11 years. Get back Leanne, to my presentation. I'll, 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 all right, what was the, what was the Leanne question? The Leanne uh, question was, Brian Wilson says that everybody should store their data in a different country way far away from where they live. And yet, yeah. when we set up Amsterdam, we set it up as this tiny little, am I even visible or am I? Yeah, we can, you're not visible. You hear me. Okay, we set up Amsterdam as this tiny little data center and we have our big three data centers in the United States. Yet our customer base is 80%, yes, how do you, Make oh, things, the, the, mar the marketing yeah. department can answer this question, but I'll I'll let Brian field it first. So, so the first the first answer is the 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 Amsterdam data center was opened up last, and all of the say six hundred thousand customers that came before that had to the best they could do was was backing up in Sacramento, and uh and a little bit of Phoenix. I think I get to that in a later slide, but uh so all of that data had built up over time and was kind of occupying a large amount of space and and the physical footprint is larger uh we only try and license the data center space that we need because it costs money but we are going to expand europe to have thousands of cabinets over the next few years as we grow in customers and we grow in space that one of the beauty things of of cloud storage or online backup is you never run out of space so it, it's not up to us it's up to our customers if there's more space we'll lease we'll license more data centers in europe the 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 marketing answer is Brian is the only person that thinks about his data in those terms. <laughs> Most people want their data to be as close to them as possible due to latency and recovery times. And does anyone does anyone think that makes sense? Like, like well, seriously, try and defend that. I need my off-site backup on site to be closer to me. Right. The only people that think that are the customers that give us both. <laughs> Brian, here's a question: If your yeah. backup is in Europe, and all that data is only in Europe. And then you want a hard drive. Doesn't it take longer to get it when you need to restore? Uh, hard drives. Well, I mean, if you need, so we we believe in this thing called a three, two, one backup strategy. Right, it's, right, right. It's actually going to take a while to get your data back, no matter what. So we actually recommend you have an on-site live, you know, copy. This What's is for the hail mary. And a lot of people like me, uh, the, a good way to do a restore is to order the restore. The big re uh, is to first download the one or two documents. Like let's say. I had lost my computer and I needed this presentation. I would go online and download that one item and it would be instantaneous. And then that would allow me to get my work done for the next couple of days. And then I would order a USB restore hard drive with all of my data and it might take a week or two and that's fine. I, I don't need my music and my you know cat pictures yet. So um, so anyway, that's that's kind of a philosophy that, that, we, that seems to resonate with, uh, with customers. Um, uh, I wish, uh, you know, is uh, Eli, is Ari around? 
No, she's in a she's in a meeting outside. Ah, uh, that's too bad. Um, uh, Eli's sister had a funny had a funny thing where her laptop crashed, and she called me and said, uh, "You know, what do I do?" And I go, "Well, have you checked to see if the backup is okay? Do you have your?" She needed a document that she was working on, like live, and uh, and I said, "Well, have you checked it?" And she goes, "Are you an idiot? I just told you my laptop crashed." And I said, "Well, <laughs> you're talking to me on a cell phone. Download the mobile client. Is Sadie? Is the mobile team here?" Oh, they're killing me. Anyway, so so the um so she's like, Backblaze has a mobile client. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ah. so she downloads the mobile client and could get her document back right there live on the mobile client. She was so happy. She couldn't believe it. And she said, everything. She goes, I don't even understand. How did you back it up so fast? I it has everything that, that I had in it. And I just was the whole time I was just like Ah, what do you, you just don't even pay attention to what you do, but what I do for a living. Well, anyway, she was an intern here. That's even more insulting. How are we doing on time? Oh crap. Okay, so let's keep moving. The so it, on this slide, on this slide, we have the the instructions. And again, uh, did someone someone here's the presentation again in the comments, so you can save it away or whatever. This is how you change. Uh, the set the the language on the website or the client it's all fully localized it's supposed to work if there's a bug file it the, the translations are perfect unless you file a bug okay so next ah, crap oh it worked uh you can also click to go to the next one that was accidental okay so uh, it's it's really fast this isn't some hard lesson and this is the this is the last terminology you need to know Internationalization is abbreviated I18N because there are 18 characters between it. And those of us that work in this field don't want to type the word internationalization over and over again. So it's called I18N. And that's if you file a bug, you have to put I18N in the title. I'll show you an example of doing that at the bottom. And that'll help us decide the contest winner. If you don't put I18N in the title, it won't come up in a search, so we won't know who, who won the contest. <laughs> Here we are, you believe. Man. Okay, so uh, localization, internationalization is the process of making software be able to speak other languages. And localization is the process of actually translating it into another language. <laughs> so right now, the, the, a, a, a correct phrase is, Backblaze client has been internationalized. A, another correct statement is Backblaze client has been localized into 11 languages. It hasn't been localized into 12 yet. Um, and uh, and these are the languages that we speak. And and like I was saying, I'm looking for a Brazilian Portuguese uh, speaker because that translation is probably not so good. Uh, okay, let me see if I can click. Yes, okay. Now again, this is not complicated. I'm not gonna make this a Unicode uh, uh, tutorial, but but, uh, and, and this is the last technical piece of information in the entire presentation, the rest is all fun. File names on all modern computers are in Unicode and you have no idea how wonderful this is. The, the good guys won. Um, Linux, Mac, Windows, they all are Unicode file names. And what Unicode is, is it's just, a, it's, it, all things on a computer have to be encoded somehow. And it used to be there were a bunch of different encodings all over the world and this job was, uh, of doing localization, internationalization was very hard. Now it's a very easy job, and one of the one of the 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 nice things about Unicode is you can type one sentence. This is actually a live sentence at the bottom, or a live series of hellos at the bottom, and and I can edit it, um, and it's all on one line, and it has all languages encoded into sections of the same mapping. So you can use a Korean character or a Chinese character in a file name and also use other characters from other languages. And you can mix and match and, and, and they all work. Because of that, the Backblaze client, if, if you think about it, there's localization of the UI, but there's also being able to backup files and restore files that are in another country's name. So Billy's uh, code that, that displays the tree of restores has to properly uh, display Chinese and Japanese and Korean file names in that tree. And if it doesn't, you need to file a bug. And then uh, on the client, we have to be able to back up file names. And it's not up to us. We have to. I mean, otherwise, we, it, the product just wouldn't even function. So so we, we back up 
any file name in the world, and we restore any file name in the world. And that's it. And Unicode is great. Oh, and and the tools to edit Unicode are ship on every platform. In other words, you don't have to pay a single dollar. You can use text edit on the Mac. It's the most basic editor and it and it and it edits Unicode and you can type in it and you can use Notepad on Windows. Um, what's funny is you can't use WordPad on Windows. Although I think in Windows 10, WordPad started working for Unicode, but but Notepad on Windows does work and it's free. So, okay, next one. Okay, numbers. This is one that, that a lot of people forget about. So if you look at the example in the middle of the screen, these are the same number. Uh, so the, the good news for localization people is uh, uh, Arabic symbols one, and there's this zero through nine, that, and base 10 is used everywhere in the world, ex except for the bottom, the bottom exception here uh, uh, along the bottom of the slide. Um, but but we don't we don't handle that, and it's not important. Uh, the the all of the good guys, all of the decent countries use uh, Arabic numerals, but they use different punctuation. So in French, you use a space instead of a comma, and you use a comma instead of a period. In German, you use a period instead of a comma and a comma instead of a period. And in the U.S., we use the comma and the period convention. And these are the same number. So if you see the numbers of files selected and it's in another language, it, 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 it's not a bug if you see the punctuation changed as long as we got it correct. Now, if we didn't change the punctuation and we should have, that's a bug and you could make $200. There are, the only exceptions on earth are really, really funny. The Celtic, Celtic uses a base 20. So they have to have more than the zero through nine. And then there's this Amazon tribe <laughs> called the Baraha or something, which they they literally don't have numbers. They have a, a term which is more and a term that's less. Uh, and and so if you hold up two bananas, they might say more, and you hold up three bananas, and they might say less, and then they'll they'll you know you'll hand them one banana. But um, but there's but there's no numbers. But all you know, the vast majority of everyone just uses the, the Arabic numbers. Okay, that's everything you have to know about localization. That's it. And as, as I said, I only speak bad American. Um, and, and, and my job is the internationalization part, which is to make sure the products speak, have the ability to speak all these languages. The localization is up to people who, who speak the native language. Okay. Uh, then other parts of the business, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get through that we have actually already solved every single problem uh, to being international. Um, and so you have to think through all the implications. Then on the next slide, we have to talk about taxes, which is we have to be legal in all countries. We can't just, we, we, we can't have the CTO getting arrested when he gets off a plane in, in, in France because we've, we've avoided paying our French taxes according to law. So. Um, I'm the CTO, by the way, if that wasn't, yeah, that was just a joke. Anyway, so uh, the currencies Backblaze accepts. So Backblaze actually only accepts US dollars. And the price is $6 a month for personal backup. But luckily for us, uh, credit cards all over the world just seamlessly convert this for us, sort of on the fly based on that day's exchange rate. So $6 US is about five uh, euro, at the time I wrote this, but it might have changed. It might be five and ten, and so a uh, 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 you know a person that's getting billed in euros, their bill might vary every month and see that. Uh, what uh, does anyone know? What we do on the uh, like on the transactions page? Do we display six dollars, or do we display the euro amount? Well, anyway, no, so um, we display six dollars USD everywhere. Okay, as long as it says USD, that's fine. And then five point four eight Swiss franc. Uh, and uh, and then here, you know, there are, I, I just listed these because I thought they were funny. Uh, uh, they have Dogecoin, Dogcoin, I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Cameroon uses bottle caps. They're actually specific beer bottle caps from certain manufacturers as their currency. Um, I made that up, the one. I couldn't even figure out the exchange rate. I think it matters what's printed on the bottle cap. The bottle cap uh, has a prize that you can 
return the bottle cap and get this prize. And so, so it, it, it's not one bottle cap for six US dollars. It's actually depending on which bottle cap you have. Uh, there's Icelandic Krona and Angoli Angolian Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. Leanne's right. We don't use USD, but we do use the USD symbol. Okay. Um, I should have actually, uh, no, I guess the Swiss franc and Euro, I don't know if what's your uh, pounds, sterling, you know, there, there's all these different symbols and stuff. We should do that correctly. And if there's a bug, you could make $200 if you correctly identify it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so going to the next slide, hold on. Okay, location of Backblaze data centers. Okay, so uh, sometimes you'll hear us talking, this isn't really localization, uh, but it. I just threw it in. Uh, 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 sometimes you'll hear us use the terminology SAC zero or SAC one. You'll hear it in the all hands. Uh, SAC is Sacramento, and then we just number them numerically from zero because computer science uh, people are silly. And and so it's SAC zero and SAC one, it'll be SAC two and SAC three and SAC four. There's Phoenix zero. There's only Phoenix zero, but but someday there might be a Phoenix one. And uh, and we have AMS. I think for Amsterdam, and then to make it especially confusing in the all hands on Mondays, we'll either use SAC one, Roseville, or the word Quest. So I had to. I think this mapping is correct, but if someone if someone corrects me, it's like Rancho Cordova is the is the actual city it's in, and SunGuard is the name of the company. Although somebody, I thought somebody bought SunGuard. Um, but anyway, You're and right. then and also to make things really confusing, AMS is actually AMS five because we're in building <laughs> five of the AMS facility. Oh, oh that's funny. So yeah, and then each of, the, each of these facilities will have like multiple buildings and you know stuff like that. And also the, the 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 data centers themselves will say things like "You're in data center four. and I'm like, "Why? I'm not. I'm like, what? You know?" And it's that just that's their internal naming that's different than ours. Okay, yeah. and then this slide. If you forget how to do it, this slide shows you the three amazingly hard steps to create an account in, in any region. And that is one, click on the cloud storage button, two, click sign up, and three, click region. And if you don't know this, there are only accounts at Backblaze. There's no such thing as a B2 account. As much as people say it, they're wrong. And, and, uh, and when you say you have a B1 account, they're wrong. If you have an account at Backblaze, you can go in, and find the settings and enable the different product lines or disable them. And, and that's totally free. Enabling product lines and disabling is free. It's part of your account. You have an account. So if you want all your data to be in Amsterdam, go here, like this slide says, create an account in Amsterdam, and then all your data will land in Amsterdam. OK. OK. You also forgot the San Mateo data center. Oh, the, you know, that's a good point. Part of our operations uh, are actually in San Mateo, California, in the corporate office, and it is part of our data center. That's a, that, I'll, you know, I'll try and go back and change that slide. That's a really good point. Someone has uh, to say Adam's honor. And it irritates, it irritates the IT people, but I, I don't do it explicitly because of that. It, that's just a bonus. <laughs> Do we have any IT guys on here? Tech ops? No. Okay. So, so the tech ops guys have have this uh, these things like uh, uh, gatekeeping on what makes a data center, and it has to have like certain number of network connections and a certain power redundancy and other things. And and the San Mateo office, we don't put anything in it that really, really, really has to stay up all the time. So we don't serve our homepage of our website out of the San Mateo office. We do USB restores because if if they're offline for a day, no no one no one minds. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, so location of Backblaze customers, customers, customers. It looks funny to me. It's kind of stretched or something. Anyway, uh, please do not all log in. And I'm not joking. I'm not trying to swamp this thing. Don't all log into that URL. Uh, but it's but it's super fun to do, and you could do it offline. But if you all do it right now, I swear the Tableau server will probably crash. So Tableau is this reporting package that that we use. This is the username and login, and then you're in a just view mode that you don't you won't have to. Um, that is not <laughs> that is not a secure username and password. Where I, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's it's just it's nothing but fun. Everyone should know this stuff. We should publish on our on our homepage. Um, so uh, we'll probably be taking this away when we IPO uh, because having access to this means you know how the quarter is going and that would make you an insider and stuff. But 
But for now, if you want to play with this, it's really fun. Now, if you look at the map, just to, just to be clear, if you look at the map and hover your mouse over one of these dots, the, first of all, the dots are different sizes to represent the amount of money we make in each country. And if you look around, there's a dot on almost every country in the world. It's, it's amazing, okay? And my fav one of my favorite ones is if you zoom on in on the Caribbean, there's an island that's highlighted here on this slide called uh, St. Lu Lucia? Lu Lu How do you pronounce that? Anyone know? Lucia. Lucia, Lucia St. Lucia. Santa Lucia. And we made $4.43 in all of 2019 <laughs> from, from this island. <laughs> So <laughs> this is this is a, a, what we call a very small dot. Uh, but if you look at the size of the dot that's on Canada or the size of the dot that's on Brazil, they're actually fairly very meaty. And we made two hundred and forty thousand dollars in Brazil in two thousand nineteen, and that is growing. And that is real money. Like we need that to pay you guys the salaries and stuff. So so uh, th this is this is this is real. This product sells all over the world. Uh, Sweden, we did $341,000, which is, you know, I don't even know why. Uh, one of the embarrassments is that Korea, the place with more bandwidth than anywhere else in the world, is really weirdly small. I don't know why. I don't know why. But we don't really do that many sales in Korea. We do have some, but it's it's relatively small. Um, and, and then I threw onto this slide because it wasn't already busy enough the banned country list. Okay, so another aspect of running an international company is, uh, and this, this is where it gets kind of complicated. We're, we're in the US, and if we don't obey US laws, they will come and arrest all of us. So, and there is a list of countries that the US is currently having a tiff with over some BS that I don't care about. And, and, and that list is here. This is the banned country list. And uh, we can't do business with North Korea. We can't do business with Angola for some reason, I don't know. Uh, the Republic of South Sudan, whatever, you know, I don't, I don't know what the, what the problem is, but the, but the government gives us this list and, and here's how we enforce it. We do not take payment from a credit card if the IP address is coming from that location. So if those people can travel outside of their region and use a hotel Wi-Fi in Spain, we'll sell them the product, and then I think they'll continue to get billed for it. But in, in general, this yeah. is considered good enough to obey the, the US government laws. I Was there a question? I love that Mongolia has given us $82.76. <laughs> so it, it we want to sell to everyone, but if your dot is large enough on this map, we want to translate the the product and the website into into your language and stuff or or possibly if we know of a deal that we want to go chase you'll you'll notice that a lot of the, the a lot of the dots are actually english speaking or approximately english uh australia and canada uh are 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 english and and they're also very large sales i actually didn't know australia was that big that kind of cracked me yeah. up it and is. News... And they have terrible bandwidth, and so we get a lot of <laughs> yeah, they gotta they gotta pay for those uh, trans transatlantic lines and amortize it across like a small number of people. So, anyway, uh, okay. So just to give you some numbers, these are the these were the numbers I pulled for the language, the client, the B one client, the personal backblaze client, the language the client is running in the last time it pinged home. In other words, it reports home various things like what OS, what operating system the customer is using, nothing personally identifiable, but like the operating system the customer is using. And um, and this is the number of clients. So obviously English has 549,000 clients. It's, it's very, very popular. Uh, but the French has 2,800, uh, German and, and on down the, down the list. And, and Chinese traditional only has 86, only had 86 people running, uh, which was is kind of amazing. Um, the, the, I would have thought simplified Chinese because they're behind a Chinese firewall that blocks uh, a bunch of uh, stuff. I would have thought that there was there, that that was the lowest one, but it's actually Taiwan is is the lowest. So, and this just gives you an idea of how you know we're already selling in all these countries. It's they're already speaking this language to the client. This isn't this isn't future. This is behind us in the rearview mirror. Okay, we have some guest speakers here today. Uh, so, since we're selling 
all over the world. Uh, Casey Christensen, is Casey still in the call? Did he drop? I am. Uh, there you are. So how, what happens? How often do we get uh, foreign language interactions? Uh, every day. Really? Yeah. Uh, when I... Go when I was still doing when I was still doing support, we got a couple, and I'd use Google Translate. I'd type a sentence in English, and I'd translate it to like German. And one well, the first guys I did that to was really funny. He, I would, I pointed to the tool in the email, and then I had every phrase was both in English and in German on the hopes that he could understand one of the two. And he, and he emails back, and he's got the same pattern exactly. He got the whole system, and he, and he, and he's like, I love this tool. I'm, I'm so happy now. So anyway, so how do you guys uh, deal with people in other languages? So in chat and uh, in Zendesk right now, there's actually a kind of a interface to interact with uh, Google Translate like kind of live um so it's largely just through google translate if it's uh, japanese somebody wanting japanese support it will usually come to me um if it's somebody who wants to speak swedish it goes to linus um there's a <laughs> that's great uh, chris grace knows enough german to kind of communicate with uh hmm. some of the german clients and stuff so we kind of push it toward the the people who can understand it are there or we just use uh google translate for most of it cool so so the the two questions he had is like how often do we how how do we handle it which he answered and how often does it come up which he said daily so yeah. this is this is real we're a multinational we sell all over the world Okay, uh, Adam, USB restore shipping. H how, how many international ones do we ship? Rough estimates. Well, um, we are currently shipping about 600 restores in total every month. And the <laughs> international numbers are about 15% of that. So huh. that an idea. It's, um, you know, it's quite a few. It's about 90 a month. So you know, probably... Uh, two to four a day go out the door. So who was uh, asking that earlier? Was that was that Eric that, uh, or, or somebody else that was asking how to how do you handle uh, international shipping? Um, yeah, so we do it all all the time, and and we ship to every country as far as I know, right? Pretty much. Um, we uh, obviously can't ship to the countries that we're banned with. Um, that we're banned with. Are we primarily ship FedEx? There are some countries that FedEx shipping is very difficult to, like in the last uh, two years. Uh, it's been very difficult to ship to Russia with FedEx, so we often switch to U.S. Postal Service and things like that. Um, we also get a moderate number of um, uh, U.S. military um, people who we ship to via U.S. Postal Service because they have a, uh, a special mailing system for that. But cool. by and large, we can um, ship all that. To answer Huey's question for... Um, all USB restores right now are coming out of San Mateo. Eventually, when our um, EU operations get large enough, we'll be um, looking at expanding both USB restores and uh, fireballs to ship out of the closer data center, which, you know, closer may be physically closer. It may be uh, based on laws or things like that. So within the EU and that kind of stuff. But right now, everything comes in and out of San Mateo. One of the things that I think is just amazing is the other backup companies that used to compete with us. I mean, we've crushed them all now, but but uh, the other backup companies would would occasionally dabble in USB restores uh, of some kind, but then they would say only to US and Canada or US, Canada and and Europe or something like that. And I and I'm like, we're the smallest one. Like, how can we like we just like it's you just put an address on it. And it goes like, what's the big deal, you know? So anyway, so thank you, Adam. Uh, Cecilia, taxes. Uh, just to introduce this situation, every government in the world, m many governments in the world realized that there was this tax revenue they were missing out on for online products. So they started charging what's called VAT, value added tax, which has existed for years and years and years in Europe, but they started charging it on online digital products a couple of years ago. And that makes us legally responsible to collect the VAT into our coffers and then to remit it back to the correct country. This, this, is, this is like 
they just sort of threw this on us. They didn't give us any money to do this. And then we had to do a whole bunch of work. Um, and then we have to pay taxes. Cecilia, how many countries do we currently pay taxes into? Uh, so all of EU, which is 28 countries, plus uh, Australia, Norway, and New Zealand. So and we collect, so we're basically a pass through, right? We collect taxes on behalf of the government agency, and then every quarter we in turn file a return to each, um, well, for the EU, we just file with Ireland, and then Ireland is responsible for um, distributing all the money to the rest of the EU countries. And, and we give great. Ireland a table of how much each country is owed? Correct. That's how we file. Because with the EU, it does not necessarily have to be Ireland. You can register with any EU country to do that. So, But we decided that we were going to register with Ireland. And then when we file, so this is what's called the VAT MOS, which is the VAT mini one-stop shop, where we send it all to Ireland. And we tell Ireland, okay, this is for Italy, this is for Romania, Sweden, Slovakia, all that. And then they, in turn, distribute that to the EU countries. And but we for, do this for, quarterly. And for, for those of you who don't know, when she said 28 European countries, they couldn't make this easy on online products. That's 28 different rates of tax. 28. Correct. Okay. Correct. So when, <laughs> and so what happens is the, the bill is $6, right? And then let's say, then what we had to do, what we had to write, we had to map that. So if they've got like a bank and, a, and, a, and an IP address that's in like France, then we have to collect the correct rate for that one individual customer. And then we have to remit that back to France. And, um, and all of this is, is to be legal. Um, and, and some of the countries had, uh, some people are more reasonable than others and they had like a cutoff. If you, if you make below a certain amount of money, you don't owe us any tax because obviously, you know, you sell one item on eBay or something, you don't want to have to, you know, pay tax on it or something like that. So, um, anyway, so how much time Cecilia does this take out of our, uh, uh, maybe to do the filing, maybe. A few hours every quarter. Let's let's just say half a day. Who does that? Do you? The, uh, not anymore. Now it's Wilson who does it. Yeah, because okay. it, it just takes long to because we have to make sure that we're using. You know, we need to go back to make sure that we're using the rate for the EU countries. The last um, day business day of the quarter. So that conversion rate. We have to make sure that we're using that and, you know, all this little things, plus approvals and all that and wiring and, you know, so but let's well, say it, half a day every quarter. I'm impressed it's that little. Um, it takes engineers way more than that much time every quarter to repair the system, to keep it operational, to update the charts and tables. Uh, we, we've spent a, a decent amount of effort on it, but it, it's all it's all worth it. Um, and and what's what's happening is that the whole machine is totally there. It's it's all there. So adding more dollars, you know, wouldn't affect any of this effort. It just it, we're already paying France, you know, you know, eight dollars in tax. Paying them nine is fine too. All right. So that's that was just some of the other things to think about when you when you start thinking about selling in a global market and 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 what 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 we had to handle to make it legal. And, and Backblaze tries to be, just to be clear, Backblaze tries to be compliant with all laws. So uh, Europe has these things called GDPR. Uh, I don't even know what it stands for, but it's the privacy law for data and stuff. So we, we, when they pass a law, we try and, we try and adhere to it because uh, I travel sometimes it, you know when the pandemic is not. <laughs> and, uh, and I want to be able to get off an airplane in France and not get arrested. So, um, and 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 governments really hate people who don't pay taxes. So, okay. Uh, this is the final slide, I believe. Uh, this is the two hundred dollars. Okay. So, uh, anyone who wants money, wants free money, uh, there's a contest. The top bug reporter gets two hundred dollars, and the second uh, place gets one hundred dollars. It's cash money. 
I shouldn't say this on a recorded call, but it's off the books. Like you won't get taxed on it. It'll just come in an envelope and it comes you out of to, Tina's budget. You have to, and, you, have to file it, you have to file it yourself. Uh, <laughs> oh yes, you, uh, you, you'd be responsible for taxes if someone found out, which they're there you go. You. Now so, you okay. <laughs> so this is the URL, this is the URL. And again, this whole presentation can be found here in case you wanna save it away. Look at your chat window, there it is. Okay, and um, uh, you go to backplace.atlantian.net slash JIRA, and JIRA is our bug tracking system that we use. And if you notice a bug, now I've got one up on the screen, on that slide, I've got this bug. Okay, this is this is a wreck. So first of all, the, the, UR, the URL here is secure.blackblaze.com slash gift .htm. If you go to that, you can buy someone a gift code in 11 different languages, but it is such a train wreck. It is, it is, it's a horror show. So let me, let me, let me go through some of the problems. Give the gift is not translated. $60 is not translated. Purchase a gift. None of this is translated, but estados unidos is translated. So by definition already, so there are some pages like, uh, 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 let me give you an example. The B2 documentation is in English only. It's for programmers. We made the decision that programming documentation for programmers, uh, programming languages are by and large are in English. We're, that's that's fine. That's not a bug. I mean, it, you can file a bug, but we'll just reject it as not a bug. But, um, and it won't count toward the contest. But when a page is half translated, oh man, that one just kicks out at you. That's just wrong. Like it has to be English or the other language. Now, so uh, does anyone know es, what Estados Unidos means? Yeah, it's United States in Spanish, Estados Unidos. And how about, uh, the, how, how do you pronounce, is Leanne still on the call? How do you pronounce Codigo? Codigo Postal. Codigo, Codigo. Anyway. Codigo Postal. No. <laughs> Codigo Postal. <laughs> so, okay. So, um, so those are correct. And, and, and those are the thing. Now, now here's the one that I think Vlad noticed. Look closely at the M M Y Y. Those, oh, <laughs> those are in English. And it turns out, this is really, really funny. Do you know what month, the letter month for month is in, in Russian? It turns out it's M. That was lucky, but the Y is an upside down L. And so that's a bug. And that bug is on every single solitary uh, billing page all across our product. It's a, it's a wreck it, and it, so someone needs to figure out how to fix this. And I, and I think it's Stefan, Stephen. Is that, is that right? Is he, that who, is Tina on? Who's, uh, I've lost You're people. You're talking about front end developer, Stephen? Yeah, yeah. Somebody's gonna have to fix that stuff. Okay. Well, Stephen can certainly fix it if someone tells him what to fix. Yes. So, oh, oh. Uh, and the way you tell someone what to fix is you file a Jira bug. And when you file the Jira bug, you go to this URL. And then you have to have the word I18N in the title test that the person who files the most bugs with I18N in the title gets $200. And the second most filed bugs gets $100. So all of you, and this ends on Friday at 5 p.m. And we'll, we'll, we'll announce the winner. Um, but but you just make sure that you put I18N in the title of the bug. It's like, something like this. It's really easy. It's I18N, translation is missing on gift page. Done. You know, whatever. File it. And the, and the more, the better. Um, and you just got to go through the website and find all the problems in every language. And, and oh, and you get double points for everyone. The, the bottom line here is, Corrections to translations are double points toward the contest. So if you speak a foreign language, get in there. And um, especially for people like Alex. Alex, do you speak any Russian? Oh, yeah. So Yev is responsible for the Russian translation. Well, Yev and Vlad, really. So, so if there's any errors in the product, either the client or the website, file those bugs. Let's get those translated correctly. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll have to we'll have to get together and fight it out over beer. <laughs> so, I like I like that. I, so, a story so, I, I, we'll have to pay for that at least. A story I tell is uh, when Vlad was originally doing some of the translations, uh, um, 
he was on the phone with his Russian friends, you know, furiously speaking Russian, discussing these words. And I'm like, it doesn't have to be that accurate. Like just something. And he's like, no, no, wait, wait, wait. And we, they were like back and forth talking with people in Russian, trying to figure out what the right. I mean, it's crazy, for. right? Because if you try to translate the word backup into Russian, the, the proper translation is reserve which is literally reserve copy, which has like, sure, that's correct <laughs> technically, but like, is it? I don't like it. Okay. If you see a there problem, people, for example, like like the 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 big Becca cloud storage is wrong. Yeah, in Russian. File it. I will. You can get two hundred dollars. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, I believe that Stephen is personally responsible for any errors in the Spanish. Uh, um, is that true? Uh, well, uh, he might not know it yet. Uh, but I believe Stephen speaks fluent native Spanish. Is that true, Leanne? Is he? I I'm think not sure that's how we assign work. <laughs> yeah, well, what? He's an engineer. This is a product. <laughs> I mean, sure. no, he doesn't okay, have to okay. fix. He doesn't have to fix Cecilia's accounting. But but you know, it's a he's a front end you know web engineer. Like this is what he does. I assume you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, other languages. Uh, I don't know who German, French. I don't know if we have native speakers now. No one's going to raise their hand. Oh. Um, yeah. French, uh, I know Ken helped on some French uh, a while back, but I mean, they also, oh, yeah, Ken? yeah, 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 because he speaks some French. But the the thing is, is that, like, stuff has gotten so much more complicated. Like back in the no, 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 it, it, it's all ready to go. You just have to type a different string into one source file, and it just happens. No, I just meant in terms of like who's responsible. Like, so Ken used to help with French back when we had like three web pages, and it was like very simple, like install, back up, like things are easy now. Uh, look, I'm not, I'm joking. If anyone thinks that I'm actually like saying that that Yev and, and Vlad have to have to do this, but file the bugs. We can't fix what we don't know. And a lot of people don't have your language skills. So if you speak one of these languages, flip the menu and help us out. And, it, and it's all our responsibility to help out, you know, is to read through it. And if you know someone, if you're, if your spouse, uh, speaks, you know, fluent Korean or something, you know, <laughs> does anyone hear that? Uh, my, my, my wife speaks fluent Korean. So, um, so anyway, find, you know, find people and help out. Oh, I'll make sure you, that's good. That's good. Definitely find any bugs and we're all responsible for the product early on when there were only six or seven of us, it was clear that everyone had to pitch in and was responsible. When a company gets to a certain size, it's hard to get that feeling across that you have the power to fix all of this by just filing a JIRA ticket and it'll just magically get fixed um, by, by, by one of the engineers. They just didn't know. So, okay, that is the whole, that is the whole presentation. Does anyone have any yes, questions or fire away? uh i put it on the uh, chat so first oh. one is when we file the bug is it one case per file or you know when we create the bug oh uh, if file? you yeah it, i mean try and be reasonable but like don't don't say that you know the first letter of this word is uh is is wrong and then close and then file that bug and then the the second bug shouldn't be the second letter of the word is wrong like that would that's just artificially inflating your and we'll we'll judge this i think leanne has to do the uh uh it, it the, the search in jira it should be either the section or the string yeah so you could file one bug that says that this is um it's not even localized at all you could also file a bug that says this line is wrong or this heading is incorrect or inconsistent. I love inconsistent. You, you can't have it both ways. If it's Backblaze Cloud Storage in one place, it has to be Backblaze Cloud Storage in all the places. And and if you need some clarification on that, I can't remember. Yev, are you the one? Did you help us work through all of the... Like sometimes words like Backblaze and Google are just proper nouns that, yeah. that yeah. are... So I think B2 Cloud Storage we're supposed to leave that alone and not translate the word cloud storage. Yeah, so so the general guidance there is product names. So computer backup, online backup, B2 cloud storage are not uh, translated. Backblaze is not translated. And then also headline features are not translated. This one, it, this one changes from time to time. For example, you can translate locate my computer. It's not a headline feature, but extended version history we are considering a headline feature for the simple fact that there is there is no 
translation that makes sense for what that string is intended to mean. So it's a, it's a little weird, but yes. Okay. I so just answered. My, yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah, so my second question is regarding grammar. When we do translate into other languages, do we ensure grammar is being correct too, or just like? Oh my English gosh! Yes. Yes. Different, uh, different things like that. Yeah, the grammar has Especially to be perfect. in English as well. Perfect. So. Yes, the grammar has to be perfect, uh, you know, especially in English, but in all languages, the grammar has to be correct. Uh, one way of doing automated translation, so the way we did the products, by the way, a historical anomaly is this is how it's done. When we write the software, I don't speak any other languages, but I'm not allowed to check in code that doesn't speak all 11 languages. So what I do is I use Google Translate, which we know is crap. Don't don't no one get hung up on that. We use Google Translate to make sure that I can pull down the menu and it changes in, in, in every language. Okay, then we use native speakers like you guys to touch it up. So one way of, the, I don't know how Google Translate does it, but one way to translate is to translate each individual word, but then you get the wrong sentence structure. You know, uh, yeah. it, it, it's gotta be right. It's gotta be native. It's gotta feel good to a person in that, in that, in that country. Um, it's often people think that we, the engineers like like me and Alan, will will internationalize the product and give them the ability to change the string. Then what we do is we hire this outsourcing company, uh, this 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 language translation company, uh, to go through and they use native speakers in those native countries to translate it. The problem with that system is, and the reason it'll never work, is they don't understand any of these rules. And they don't understand any, they don't understand technology and they don't, they're just, they're just, it's, it'll never work. We have to use, we have to take responsibility and the engineers have to understand, you know, w what's going on and, and that kind of thing and, and, and help out. So you can't just wave your hands and say it's somebody else's problem. You, we have to do this ourselves. And, um, and that's why having uh, like, well, I'm ready to hire ringers, uh, like, like, you know, we'll just hire people for the Backblaze baseball team if they speak Brazilian Portuguese at this point because I, I need a native speaker on staff. Um, so, which project should I select? Huey, which project should I select? All of them. You want to make money? Oh, Free mean, money? What, mean, no, I, I don't know what Architect Council, is that where it is or somewhere else? When we oh, uh, 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 Leanne. Or is it under engineering development okay. or... Uh, yeah. Our, our Jira ticket, our Jira ticketing system is confusing Huey. He has this is beautiful. By the way, Huey, thank you very much for filing a bug. Huey's never filed a bug before, and he's going through the Jira ticket, and he's asking, "What's the question? What project to select?" Yeah, there's a whole bunch of projects here. When I create the issue, so the top drop down. If, if you guys fill out the <laughs> minimum amount in your tickets, but you put at Leanne somewhere in your ticket, then I can go in and add all these fields that you guys might not know where they belong, like the yeah. epic and the fixed version and the effects version and yeah, all of these things. All you guys need is the subject, which has to have the prepended with internationalization or I-18N. Uh, <laughs> and then just a short summary. And then in the description, you need to fill up the description. And then somewhere in that description, put at Leanne, like down at the bottom, or add a comment into that ticket and say, here you go, Leanne. Um, and then I can add it to the right epic, which would be internet internationalization or other defects. We'll decide that later. Um, Don't be intimidated by the, by the bug tracking system. Fill out what you can mainly the subject and the description and, and let us do the rest. And if you become someone who files a lot of tickets, then we're going to raise your salary because that makes you a better person. And, and <laughs> Cecilia is looking at me funny. If you, if you file a lot of bugs, we're going to, you're going to get bigger salary. You're going to have, you know, it's going to be great. We're going to give you people that report to you and uh, we'll teach you how to use the bug tracking system more. But if you just file one or two uh, tickets, then then uh, you can you can still win the $100. Uh, that is not a legally binding statement. <laughs> I believe it is now. So one thing that you can do is always helpful is you can take a screenshot of the problem and draw a red arrow on your screenshot and attach that file to the JIRA ticket. 
so those of you who haven't been in this in this in this job for years, so I've worked. I I started my career in QA, and I am I'm on the receiving end of bug reports from customers all the time. And I tell you, a screenshot is awesome. It is awesome. It, you know, some guy will like report a bug like oh, the translation's wrong. Literally, that's it. He doesn't give a URL. He doesn't say whether it's the client. He doesn't say whether it's the website. And he won't tell me the phrase that was wrong. And I'm like, really? That You put that through your thought process? But this is really common. So just, you know, screenshots are awesome, you know. And then, and then you know, the, the, the best description of, of where you saw it. Normally, normally... Uh, if you if you see the problem and it's on the website, we don't care what platform you're running, whether it's Mac or Windows, right, uh, or or whatever, what OS version you're running. Um, but there are situations like if you're running, if you report a bug in the client and it's a layout problem, uh, it, you wouldn't know this, but the code is totally separate. The Windows guys have their own code, the the Mac guys have their own code, and so it, it can it can be helpful. And if you include a screenshot, we can pick up what platform it is just by eyeballing it. So it can be really helpful <laughs> in ways that you don't even know. Screenshots are good. How are you making sure we don't double report the bug? Double reporting is fine. You win the contest if you double report. Uh, not not you. You aren't allowed to report the same issue 100 times. But just because someone else saw the issue doesn't make it invalid for you to report it. There's You don't have to browse the Doug bug database. And, and filing bugs is a form of voting for a feature to be fixed. So if one person files a bug that says they are unhappy that like the client doesn't back up a certain type of file. We don't care. But if a hundred people file that bug and say that, that the client doesn't back up, we start waking up and worrying about it and thinking about it. So for translations is the same thing. Let's say everyone files the same bug on the homepage. Let's fix the homepage. Like it's the homepage. Like there's no excuse for that, that not to be perfect. Um, now down when you've navigated down all the way. Oh, let me say, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me, let me give you a little um, background on how the website works. So the client is completely translated. Every last feature is completely localized and, and translated. The sign in page, Marge has completely localized the whole thing every last string in the in the sign in page into every language and it's perfect or or you have to file a bug but the rest of the site the top nav works but it's not every page uh, we call them the mini sites so the top nav has to, the navigation has to work in the foreign language so let's say you switch it into japanese Every top tab needs to be there because otherwise it would break your brain, right? And you can go across every tab, but but the marketing page has a bunch of, for instance, um, case studies. We haven't translated the case studies and and other things. Now we just don't link to the case studies in in the mini sites for the other languages, but but it's all waiting there. And and the idea here is, let's say we started getting traction in. Uh, uh, you know, Brazil or something, and we wanted to really chase that. We wanted to put four marketing people on it, five sales guys on the ground in, in Brazil, then it's all ready to go. But then we would flesh out that section of the website. Um, but anyway, so just, it's not a bug if this exact page does not exist in a foreign language. That's not a bug. It's a bug if you flip the foreign language page and you click on a link and it goes to a 404. That's a bug. Um, and, and I believe there's a over 200 of those in there. Uh, just if you wanted to look around, uh, they're, they're little Easter eggs for free money. Um, you just change to your favorite language and then try every link on every page and I'll bet you you'll win the contest. If you file the bugs. Vanna, have you been here the whole time, Vanna? Yes. Okay, good. I'm not allowed. I've, I've been told that I'm not allowed to have an office hour without having HR present. Oh my gosh. So. We go over this every week, Brian. I am not required to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am required to be here. 
<laughs> Deb might be. I'm definitely not. <laughs> I enjoy uh, listening to this. <laughs> um, and good, good. And and uh, Vanna, do you speak any other languages other than English? I do. I speak Vietnamese. Ah, oh, Vietnamese is not one of our languages. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I wonder how I, I, someone I, should I, check I, how I, our I, sales are. Oh, I, I mean, I definitely can speak it. Doesn't like, exist. <laughs> no, it's not a bug. If the, well, I mean, yeah, it, 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 if if the language doesn't exist in our pull down, we only support 11 languages right now. I think one of those is English. Um, and the list is very static. It's the same identical list on the website. It's the same identical list in the client. And it, it should look very similar when you pull it down. They should be in the same 